Diffusion of Solutes Across a Permeable Membrane by Navneet Flaha and Anthony Santos. Introduction. What is diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of solutes from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration down a concentration gradient. It is spontaneous and doesn't require energy. As you can see that on the picture on your lower left hand corner, in the beginning, the left side of a membrane had a greater concentration of a certain solute than the right side of a membrane. But as time elapsed, <coughs> sorry, as time elapsed, the molecules diffused so that there was an equal concentration of uh, the molecules on each side of the membrane. The role of concentration gradients. Concentration gradients are very important in a cell. They're created any time that there is an unequal balance of solutes across a membrane. When there is a concentration gradient, molecules want to move and try to find equilibrium. And the molecules in diffusion, molecules will always move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And any time that there is a gradient, there is a high amount of potential energy. This energy can be used by the cell for work. Second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics states that the transfer of energy increases entropy, or disorder. This relates to diffusion because the solutes are going from a region of high concentration to low concentration. The high concentration is more organized than the low concentration. Equilibrium. Equilibrium is the equal distribution of molecules in any space. For example, as you can see in the pictures below, <coughs> a drop of blue dye is dispersed in a glass of water. It just, it's just like added to the glass of water, and as you can see, it just starts out at the top. But as time elapses, um, the uh, the blue dye has now dispersed throughout the entire glass of water, and and it will continue doing so until it reaches equilibrium. This was our experiment, the procedures and results. Um, in our experiment, we were supposed to test to see whether certain molecules could pass through an artificial membrane to reach equilibrium. Since the membrane is only permeable to substances by size, we believe that the larger molecules will not be able to pass the membrane to reach equilibrium. However, the smaller molecules will be able to cross the membrane to reach equilibrium. Our experiment, part one. Um, these were the first set of steps. First, we prepared the 25 centimeter dialysis tubing, meaning that we clipped one end of the tubing and we opened up the other end. Then, we placed the opened end of the dialysis tubing under the funnel and poured 25 milliliters of starch, or Na2SO4. We closed the dialysis bag with the clip, with another clip, and then we removed as much air as possible before we closed. Then we rinsed the bag with water and we and, it pat, and pat dried. We placed the tube in the beaker of the solution, which was our artificial um, cytosol. We recorded the uh, starting time, and I, I sorry, I didn't mean cytosol. I meant extracellular fluid. We then recorded the uh, starting time, and we allowed the experiment to run for 60 minutes. Part two of our experiment. We used China markers to label the test tubes one through eight. After 60 minutes um, of, the, of running the experiment, we poured 20 ml of so, uh, solution from the beaker into a, the 25 ml graduated cylinder. We then poured five milliliters of the solution into each of the test tubes one through four. <coughs> we then cleaned and dried the graduated cylinder. We removed the dialysis bag from the beaker solution, rinsed it off, and cut open one end. Then we poured 20 milliliters of this bag solution into the graduated cylinder, and then we poured 5 milliliters of this solution into each of the test tubes 5 through 8. We performed the starch test on test tubes five, 1 and 5. We added several drops of Lulol solution to each test tube, each meaning 1 and 5, and if the starch was present, 
then the test tube solution would turn a dark blue-black color. If the solution turns blue-black, we recorded it as a positive test result. If there was no color change other than the brown color of the Lugol solution, we recorded it as a negative test result. Results from the beaker solution are recorded in table 3, and results from the bag solution are recorded in table 4. Then, we performed the sulfate ion test on test tubes 2 and 6. We added several drops of 2% BACL2 into each test tube. <coughs> if sulfate ions were present, a white precipitate, barium sulfate, would form. If the precipitate formed, we recorded it as a positive test result. If there was no precipitate, we recorded it as a negative test result. And the results from the beaker solution were recorded in table 3. Um, and results from the bag solution were once again recorded in table 4. Then, we performed the chloride ion test on test tubes 3 and 7. We added several drops of silver nitrate to each test tube. If chloride ions were present, a milky white precipitate, silver chloride, would form. If the precipitate forms, we recorded it as a positive test result. And if there was no precipitate, we recorded it as a negative test result. <coughs> results from the beaker solutions are recorded in Table 3, and results from the bag solution are recorded in Table 4. Then we performed the protein test on test tubes 4 and 8. We added several drops of Biret's reagent, reagent into each test tube. If the protein was present, the solution would turn light lavender. If the solution turns light lavender, we recorded it as a positive test result. If there was no color change other than the bright blue color of Biret's reagent, we recorded it as a negative test result. These are our results. Once again, the products that were being tested were starch, sulfate, chloride, and protein. Test tubes 1 and 4 represented the, uh, were the beaker fluid that represented the extracellular fluid in the cell. Um, test tubes 5 through 8 were from the dialysis tube and represented the cytosol in the cell. Starch had a positive test result in the beaker fluid, but a negative test result in the dialysis tube. This means that starch cannot pass the membrane because it is too big. Sulfate also tested positive in the beaker fluid, but it had a negative test result in the dialysis tube. This means that sulfate ions cannot pass the membrane because they are too big. Chloride ions tested positive in beaker fluid how al and also tested positive in the dialysis tube. This means that chloride is small enough to pass through the membrane. Protein tested negative in the beaker fluid and it also tested negative in the dialysis tube. This means that protein is too large to pass through the membrane. In conclusion, our hypothesis was correct. Larger molecules were unable to cross the membrane, while smaller molecules were able to cross the membrane, because the mem artificial membrane was based on size. <coughs>